Well, good morning, Melissa. How has your week been? It's been good. How's yours and Blaze's? Um, so we've been very busy this week. Um, we have, you know, listings that are kind of just sitting there. So I'm working to figure out how to get them moving, doing tons and tons of marketing on them. And so, you know, the, if the market right now is just a little, little different than it's been in the last, I don't know, decade or so. So, <laughs> and, and to me, since I work with buyers, that sounds like wow, I should really get out into the market because these sellers might be willing to negotiate. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing is that, um, you know, people keep saying interest rates are too high. Well, um, well we, and we're going to talk about that yes. in just a second here. Um, interest rates are high, but sellers are willing to help you buy down your interest rate. So instead of a 7% interest rate, you might get a five and a half or a 6% interest rate, which saves you hundreds of dollars a month. Exactly. Um, and means you probably don't have to refinance for a really long time. Right. Exactly. So, okay. So yesterday the yep. feds met and we had some good, a good report. So let's talk about that. What happened? Yes. So yesterday we got the, the CPI numbers. So the consumer price index numbers, and they're broken out into two buckets, the main one, and then the core one, both of them went down. Both of them came in lower than expected, which means, yay, hey, yes. <laughs> we're so excited. Um, and it did mean that rates actually took a little bit of a drop. Yes, so mortgage rates dropped a little bit yesterday. And it means that we now think that the Federal Reserve has a 100% chance of lowering the federal funds rate in September. Right. They do meet in July. So July 31st is their next meeting. People don't really think they're going to lower in July unless there are two more sets of data that come out between now and that July meeting. If they're really pointing towards this economy is not overheated and it's actually shrinking, then we, I mean, there's a possibility that we would see a drop in July. So it really depends on those two additional sets of data. Um, and one of them is employment related they keep coming back and adjusting the previous numbers that they've released. So they, I think the consensus is the job market has looked like it's been stronger than it really has been. And they're comparing data from this time last year, right? On, on the jobs numbers, but no. Well, that's current, yeah. Yes, on the, the CPI numbers, yes. It's this year relative to last year and then also month over month are the two things that they look at. Okay. But on the jobs front, like the numbers aren't as good as they said they were in terms of new jobs added. And then the jobs that have been added are really mostly part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. That's not like indicate we have a strong economy. That indicates you were already working two part-time jobs and you the third. And like my kids work at Fleet Feet in Frisco. And so they're, they're, they're in retail and they hired a person recently. This is their fourth part-time job. Wow. Oh my gosh. So like somebody, in, instead of being able to go out and get one full-time job, people are literally getting for old part-time jobs. And with part-time, you don't have to pay medical insurance. You don't right. have benefits aren't there. So the companies are saving tons of money by hiring part-time instead of full-time. Unfortunate. I can't imagine. Yeah. The hours aren't consistent. Like it's just, yeah. I can't even imagine. So that's no. not in my mind, an indication of, Hey, this economy is really strong. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, so yeah. Um, so with in September, well, maybe July, but more more likely uh, in September, we will see those, the Fed fund rates drop, yeah. um, which in yes. turn affects our housing, our mortgage interest rates. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's good. Um, and I saw that I think the NAR president is predicting by the end of the year, a 6% rate. Yes. Um, yeah. We'll what see. are... <laughs> And I remember this time last year, we were saying by first quarter of 2024, we expect five and a half percent. Well, we haven't got there yet. No. <laughs> so it's just a hurry up. Let's wait and see, really. Um, you exactly. know, my, my glass, um, what do you call it? The 
half empty, half full. <laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 oh, that you can see ball. the future. Crystal ball. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. glass, yeah, is has a crack in it because it hasn't worked yet. So <laughs> most people have not. I mean, I think yeah. at this point, it's pretty certain that we will have a cut by September. Good. Maybe sooner. I don't want to like go out on a limb and say that that's yeah. the case. Unless these next steps of data come in really indicating that we're definitely on a shrinking trend. Mm -hmm. And I've heard anecdotally a lot of news about people getting laid off and getting laid off in like high paying tech jobs in particular. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's, that's rough on the economy. Especially right now. Usually we yes. hear it at the end of the year. Yes. So, so yeah, I mean, I think my take out of all of this is if you're a buyer, get out and start looking now because you're in such a good position right now. And when rates drop to the point where the majority of people that have been waiting for WIC rates to drop decide to jump into the market, it's going to look completely different. So I did a quick poll on several buyers um, over the last week. And when I did this poll about last year, the magic interest rate number was five and a half percent. Now mm -hmm. it is, if they could get down to six and a quarter percent, that's when they would pull the trigger. So we've said a lot, basically we've said that, um, sellers are still willing to negotiate. Yes. And a lot of that is because homes are sitting on the market a lot longer. Yes. They have over the last several years. Um, so your days on market is higher. Um, so sellers are getting a little like <laughs> worried that their home won't sell. So they're willing to negotiate Yeah, um, because of the price reductions. Our, our appreciation is homes are still appreciating, but nothing like they did over the last, you know, several years, you know, seven, eight, 9%. Right. So it's kind of flattened out over these last couple of months. Um, in, in some areas. I think that's temporary. Yes. Uh -huh. We do. And I, I think if people wait until next next year, that same house is going to be between three and five percent more expensive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the typical appreciation here. Yeah. And and their lower interest rate isn't maybe it doesn't even get them a lower payment at all. Yeah. Yeah. They're okay. literally paying more money from the house instead of buy now, refinance next year, and bank the However much appreciation you got, that's now your equity, your wealth. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. So, I mean, I, I'm just, I really have pushed my buyers to pull the trigger now because it makes sense because, you know, and, and we've been saying that all year. Um, it, it's a slower market. Buyers have more to choose from. Mm-hmm. Um, and interest, I mean, interest rates are, are higher than they were two years ago, of course. Yeah. But it's I have more choice and more leverage jump in the market now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, and um, I really think with, with the rates where they are today and sellers being willing to help with closing costs, they can get a rate at six and a quarter. They yeah. Can get a rate in the fives. What's the lowest rate you've seen with buy downs recently? 5.875 nice. on a 30 year fixed. Oh, okay. So it's not even a two, one buy down or anything like that. Wow. You're fixed. So, and um, I was talking to another colleague earlier today. He locked in a deal at 5.99 yesterday. Wow. And, and again, the, the sellers contributing. So it, that's not the market rate, but that's where we're able to get him today Mm -hmm. without him having to wait, which means he's buying the house at a discount compared to what he'd pay when rates are really 5.99. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so like what, what we did recently is we offered slightly over asking and then asked for that money back to buy down, um, the interest rate. Yes. So, and, and by, instead of raising, instead of, um, um, by by doing that, she was able to save, I don't know, it was like a $300,000 house. So she was able to save $200 a month or something like, like that mm -hmm. in, in, in her mortgage payment. So, I mean, definitely is a huge savings just to do that. It is absolutely completely agree. Yeah. Well, cool. Maybe we can get some buyers under contract. Yeah. 
on their path to home ownership and building wealth. Yes. Perfect. And here, I mean, here in Dallas, like we keep saying homes do nothing but appreciate. So um, yeah. in, in, I don't know, 70 years we've seen, or 40 years we've seen yeah. seven depreciation time uh, times and what five of them were during the 2008 yeah. uh, mortgage crash. So yeah. people forget when they're trying to time the market that in 2008, when the market dropped and home prices dropped, people were fearful about what was going on in the market. So they weren't willing to pull the trigger and buy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it, the concept of timing the market sounds cool, but it just usually doesn't work. Yeah. And I don't know anybody's glass ball that works. So no, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. Well, well, thank, thank you so much. And you have a great weekend and, you know, Blaze is saying bye too, because he has to. <laughs> Every pitch, every pitch. <laughs> Very quietly and politely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, M thank Melissa. You. Okay.